In this video, we're going to look at how to use transitions in Camtasia and learn some special tips so that you can dial in your transitions and not go overboard. Let's dive in. Hey, it's Gord here. Welcome. If it's your first time here and it's your passion to make great videos, become a ninja at video editing and learn more tips on how to succeed with video and marketing on YouTube, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss a thing. Transitions are visual effects that are used to transition from the end of one clip to the beginning of another. Transitions may be used to make your video more engaging, to bring more attention to something in particular, or maybe even to hide mistakes. The transitions can be applied to video clips, images, or even groups, as long as they're touching each other on the timeline and not media that's been stitched together. In Camtasia 9, there are 30 built-in transitions covering five categories. If you hover over a transition, you'll be able to see a demo. To apply a transition, you simply drag it onto the clip or clips you want to apply to, or you can right-click on the mouse and select Add to Selected Media. If you're using the Drag On to Clip method, pay special attention to the location where you drag to. If you drag to the beginning of a clip, then the transition will only get established for the clip beginning transition. And likewise, if you drag the transition onto the end of the clip, the transition will only get established for the clip ending transition. A drag action to the middle of the clip will result in transitions applied to both ends. By now you can see that transitions actually attach to the video clip and they don't have their own track on the timeline. If you have adjacent join clips selected, notice how the transition is positioned to go from one clip to another. In the case where you have an adjoining clip but it wasn't selected, you will notice that there is a transition component on the end of or beginning of that clip but not on the other end. Now that you see how transitions are added, you also have a few options to remove transitions. If you just added it as the last action in your editing, you can just use the undo command or control Z. This will remove all that you applied. Another way is to select the transition or component or element and then press the delete key or use the right mouse button delete option. You will also notice that there is an additional right mouse button option called use trimmed content in transition. This feature by default is set to on. This sets the transition to use frames previously cut out of the video, if there are any, leaving the edited part fully intact. You can change the default behavior of this through preferences. In preferences, there are two items to look at. Number one, under the programs tab, you will find used trimmed content in transitions. By default, it's checked on. Item two, under the Timing tab, you will see Transitions. The default time length here is 1. I find the defaults to be good practical settings, but you can adjust the defaults here anytime. And then, for your next usage, they will have the newly set value. Now let's look a little closer at Transition Duration. When you hover over a transition element, you will see the start time and duration values. You will see the duration of one second, but as you drag out the end of the frame of the transition, you will see the end part of the number after the semicolon increase. This part of the number is the number of frames. For 30 frames per second video, the count will go up to 30 before the next second increment. So you have a frame by frame duration control with transitions. Note that when you drag out the frame in increments, you will see the duration jump by two frames at a time. This is because the transition has two sides to it, and each increment in duration means adding a frame to each clip. Now let's look at some tips to help you dial in the quality of your transitions. Tip number one, use the fade transition most of the time. The fade transition has a very professional and subtle look to it, and I find that it's my go-to transition for 90% of the time. Most of the other transitions are rarely used. I'll also sometimes use the fade to black to end my videos, and on rare occasions, I'll use a few of the other slide style transitions. I find that most of the transitions are more for a fun use and not so much for professional results. Tip number two, separate adjoining clips 
in order to tune the transition durations to be different on each side of the join. When changing the duration of a transition by extending or shortening the frame end, the transition duration is equally allocated across each clip. If you separate the clips, then you can independently adjust the durations on each side of the transition to get the desired result you want. Then, when you're done, just join the clips back together again for the transition execution to flow properly. Tip number three, try applying transitions in conjunction with behaviors and annotations. I often combine a fade transition to ease in a text annotation so that it appears very subtly. Likewise, adding a fade transition piggybacked on the in or out aspect of a behavior can be a nice added touch as well. Tip number four, consistently apply the transition type, no mix and match. If you use a whole variety of transition styles in a given video, you may find that it's very distracting to your audience. It's better to not mix and match very much. I've only used a variety of transitions when I'm doing more of a slideshow style video, but still, I don't overdo it. Tip number five, don't make the transition too long. As you know, the default duration is one second. For the most part, this is quite good but there may be circumstances where this duration just may be too long. For example, I may use a sketch motion annotation box draw that I only want to be on screen for a short time, and I want to use the fade transition applied to it as well. In this situation, I most Each definitely want to use a much shorter duration for the fade transition. Tip number six, use transitions sparingly. It's a best practice to apply transitions to situations where they will add some value to the story in a tasteful manner, but still don't overuse them. In contrast, straight and jump cuts are also good and considered quite acceptable for YouTube videos. Wow, there are so many Camtasia transitions and it can be so easy to go overboard and want to use a whole bunch of them just for their fun value. Using too many transitions may cause an overstimulated feeling for your audience and therefore make your video a challenge to watch. If you want more cool tips for video creating and you wish to create better videos from home, click on the link for my free ebook. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, be sure to hit the subscribe icon on this page so that you can get more videos like this in the future. And thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.